Hi, I'm Conor Hunt. This is Lecture 11 in the Probability and Combinatorics section of our unit Mathematics for Computer Science A. In this lecture, I will be talking about joint distribution. Well, I'll be giving an example with random variables and using that to introduce the joint distribution. So we're going to look at another example of a random variable. Um, this time, uh, again, we'll, we'll do a dice, but we'll do a, a dice example. They're easy to think about, e e easy to discuss. Um, but to start making the probability distribution tables, oh, the probability tables look so big, uh, I'm going to use a four-sided dice. So that's a tetrahedral dice, uh, like so, uh, whatever. And um, we imagine rolling two of them, and we'll start off with the straightforward random variable uh, x we had before, which is just the sum of the two of the two rolls, so the of the two dice. So the possibilities here are two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now I'm going to write down uh, p, p, x of x. Um, there are 16 possibilities, four for the first size, four for the second equals 16. And the ways to get two, well, there's only one way to get two, which is one plus one. So that gives us a 16 there. There's simply only one way to get eight, uh, four plus four. Uh, for three, well, there's one plus two and two plus one. There's two ways to do that. So that's an eighth. And a seven is going to be the same. So it's a three and a four. Uh, next up, uh, four. Well, we have uh, one and three, uh, three and one, uh, two and two, there's three ways of doing that, three sixteenths. Uh, the six will be three sixteenths as well. Four ways to get five, um, so there's a, a quarter there. And so that's the probability distribution uh, for the result of rolling two four-sided dices. Let's consider another random variable y. And now y is going to be the max of, of the two rolls. So y of uh, one, three uh, will be equal to y of uh, 3, 1, which will be equal to y of 3, 2, which will be equal, and, and others, which will be equal to 3. So the possible values of y, well, uh, what are the possible values of y? It can be a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. Uh, so this is py of y. The only way to get 1 is uh, 1, 1. So 1, 1 corresponds to 1, uh, and so we get a 16th there. But there's uh, more ways to get two. You can get a two one, a one two, or a two two. Uh, they all correspond to y equals two, and so we get uh, three over sixteen there. And it keeps going to get uh, to get th three. We can get uh, three one, uh, three two, three three, uh, one three, uh, two three. So there's five of those, five over sixteen, and then either by counting directly or by uh, arithmetic on the ones you already have and knowing the probability has to add up to one, uh, we know that this is um, 7 over 16. So uh, here, in these two things here, I've worked out two of these uh, probability distributions that we introduced the last day, and they describe uh, the, um, the random variables. So these random variables are both living on the same uh, space of outcomes, uh, but they uh, describe different sets of events. So this here, for example, is the event that the sum of the two dice gives four, whereas this here is the event that the maximum of the two dice uh, is four. And so we have one set of outcomes, but with two random variables. That's why it's often useful to put these subscript big X and big Y's on the P's, so you don't get confused when you have more than one probability distribution hanging around. Now we're going to consider something else, which is the, the uh, joint distribution. So the idea here is that we uh, don't look at random variables, but the um, pairs of random variables. So this is a random a pair of random variables. It lives um, technically, I guess, in the Cartesian product of the outcome space with itself. And so um, the uh, events uh, here, uh, so uh, well, for example, if we had the event um, um, for two, so the event where x is equal to four, uh, y is equal to two, that would correspond to this set of outcomes. I'm, I'm putting the x equals and so on because the uh, I don't want to confuse confuse this between the, the little two vectors describing the Cartesian product, but describing the um, uh, joint uh, joint random variable from uh, the little two vectors that describe the outcomes. It's perhaps unfortunate they but they're, they're both little two vectors. They they needn't be. Uh, so the uh, event where x equals four and y equals to two, well that corresponds to uh, well. Um, it only corresponds to one element, the element uh, 2, 2. Uh, let, let, let's look at a better one. So uh, x equals to 4, uh, y equals to 3. Well, th that corresponds uh, to, to this event here. 
um, the the uh, event where you have three one or the event that includes the outcome three one and the outcome one three. So these um, so on the outcome space we now have uh, two two random variables and we're looking at the the joint random variable given by uh, the pairs of the two values. Uh, and now we want to work out a probability distribution in that case. And so uh, this is a much larger object. Here we go. Uh, we have, um, we'll write x along the top, y uh, vertically. So the possible values of y are 1, 2, 3, and 4. The possible values of x are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we want to work out the probability of, of each of these um, uh, simultaneous events. The, the event that y is 1 and the event that uh, x is 2. And so, well, how could that happen? The, let's just write down a list of, of all the outcomes. So these are the outcomes. And again, these two vectors are the pairs of values of the dice and not uh, x, y pairs. So it's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, uh, 1, 4, uh, 2, 1, 2, 2, uh, 2, 3, uh, 2, 4, um, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4. And now, um, this is the only uh, outcome which has y equals to 1 and x equals to 2. So there's a 16 there. Um, there are no outcomes where y is 1 and x is anything bigger than 2. So if the maximum of the two dice rolls is... Uh, is, is, is 1, then the sum of them can't be more than more than 2. Uh, what about here? So um, so let's cross that one off. 1, 2 and 2, 1, both of those have the sum 3 and the maximum value 2. So we get an 8 there. And we can cross those off. Um, 2, 2, that has y equals 2 and x equals um, 4. So that's the only entry there. I don't think there's any way you can have a maximum of 2 and then sum to 2. No, there's not. And so we get zeros all the way along there. So we can continue to, so that's, that's that one. 1, 3, and 3, 1. Those two both have maximum 3 and some 4. So there'll be an 8 there, uh, and so on. And if you keep going, uh, you get uh, something that looks like this. 16, 0, 0, uh, and then 0, 0, 0. And then you get 3 8 1 8 1 8 1 8 and 1 16. So that uh, distribution there, it's the distribution uh, that tells us the probability of getting pairs of values, particular pairs of values. So this is, we have a 1 in 16 chance of getting uh, the value x, x equals um, 4, y equals 2, for example. So, uh, so the, these entries here are the uh, probabilities of getting a particular pairs of values of the two random variables uh, defined uh, on the same uh, outcome space, on, on the same set of outcomes. Uh, and this thing uh, we call the joint distribution. And as I said, uh, you could write it, uh, well, as I didn't say, uh, you can write it as PXY. Now, there's some sort of obvious things you can do with the joint distribution. So one thing you can do is, is marginalize it. Uh, marginalization is taking the joint distribution and working out the probability, the probability distribution for just one of the two, uh, uh, two variables. So this is the marginal distribution. And the idea, again, is that the probability of x given x is all the ways that you can get x, y, uh, with the particular x, so that's that x, but we're, it doesn't really matter to us, um, so we're summing out over y. It doesn't really matter to us what the y is. We're just asking what's the probability of getting um, uh, x equals to x, uh, and uh, we get x equals to x no matter what the value of y is, and so uh, we can marginalize. In other words, we can go from the joint distribution uh, to the individual distribution for x. And similarly you know, for y, uh, if you sum out the x, uh, then you can go from the joint distribution uh, to the y. So again, we're interested in the probability of getting y equals y, so we might be interested in the probability 
that uh, the maximum value is four. Uh, and just to go back to the table, the probability that the maximum value is four, well, uh, that happens uh, for x equals an eighth, sorry, x equals to f five, or x equals to six, or x equals to seven, or x equals to eight. And so uh, by uh, summing along the different possible values of x, we can get the probability that y is equal uh, to four. So marginalization is summing out over the bit that we're not interested in. And, and we can marginalize this distribution, as you can see, uh, for the x values, we just sum uh, along the rows. So the probability uh, of y, sorry, for the y value, we sum along the rows, for the probability of y being one, well, x can be any of these values. And so the um, marginal distribution for y, so along here, we're doing py of y, uh, is a 16th. The marginal distribution for um, for y equals to two, well, y can, uh, equals, uh, equals two happens when y equals two and x equals three, and when y equals two and x equals to four, so we sum these two, we get three sixteenths. Similarly, um, for, for y equals to three, uh, we get five sixteenths, and y equals four, we get seven sixteenths. Now, obviously, you know, we work this out before separately, but you know, in many cases, you'll be given the joint distribution without knowing the um, the individual distributions, and you do this marginalization to work out the individual distributions. We can similarly marginalize uh, to get the x distribution, so this is a sixteenth, sum of this column, an eighth, three eighths, a quarter, um, th sorry, that was three, three sixteenths, no, three eighteenths, I said, was um, three sixteenths, an eighth, and a sixteenth. So again, um, from the joint distribution, you can work out the distribution of the individual uh, uh, individual random variables by summing either the columns or the rows, by summing out the other variable. The other thing we can do is we can rewrite uh, the definition of conditional probability in terms of, of events. So this uh, might look a bit fiddly, but the, the obvious thing, as it were, works. So using the obvious uh, notation, p of x given y, x given y, is equal uh, to p of uh, x, y, the event where you get x and y divided by uh, p of y given y. So the probability of x, of getting x if you have y, um, so that could be rewritten in terms of an event and we can reduce this definition back to the event-based definition we had before. We won't go through that in detail, but you can see how that might work. So what we're writing here is equivalent to the event-based uh, definition. We're just now describing the events in terms of the values of random variables. So, the, uh, so what this is saying is the, um, the probability of the event where big X is equal to X, given the event that big Y is equal to Y, is equal to the probability of the event where big X is equal to X, big Y is equal to Y, divided by the event where big Y is equal to Y. Or in terms of conditional probabilities, and again using the, uh, in terms of uh, random variables, and again using the obvious notation, the probability of X given Y is the probability of X and Y divided by the probability of Y. So we can again uh, go back to our now rather crowded um, uh, table and, and see if we could uh, work that out. So let's, let's concentrate on, on this column here. Uh, or, sorry, let's concentrate on the column where um, y is equal to uh, 3. So just to copy across that bit of the column. So we have dot, 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 dot. Uh, we have y equals 3 here, and we've got 0, 0, an eighth, an eighth, a sixteenth, uh, 0, 0. And here we had 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what I'm doing is, just because my previous version of the probability distribution had got a little bit messy, I'm copying across the little bit I'm interested in here, which is the probability distribution for the event, the random variable y being equal to 3. And what I want to work out from that is the probability distribution. So these numbers here are the numbers for p of x comma y. The probability that you'll get uh, y equals 3 and x equals 4, for example, is an eighth. But what I want is the probability of x given y when we know that y is equal to 3. And so we can get that from the joint distribution by dividing across by py of y. And py for uh, 3, the probability that y equals 3, that's just the sum of all these things. We can marginalize on x, uh, and so that's um, 2, 
two, four, that's five eighths. So we get five eighths here. And so uh, we can see that the probability uh, of x, y, x given y is equal to three is going to be these numbers divided by five over eight. So it will be zero, zero, two over five, two over five, uh, one over five, zero, zero. And so that's the uh, probability distribution for, um, for x given y is equal to three. So uh, the, in, in terms of uh, uh, random variables, uh, if we have two random variables on the same outcomes, um, we can work out joint distributions, we can marginalize those joint distributions to return us to the original distribution uh, in, in, for x and for y, the two random variables contributing to the joint distribution, uh, and finally, we can work out the conditional distribution uh, from the definition of the conditional distribu distribution written in terms of random variables, which effectively means taking like rows and columns of the joint distribution, in this case, uh, the row, because we're interested in um, conditioning on y equals to three. So we choose the y equals three row of the joint distribution, that's this bit here, but we have to divide it by um, py of y, which is in fact the marginal distribution, it's the sum of these things, and so you can see it has the effect of normalizing, ensuring that the sum of these numbers is one. And so that allowed us to work out the conditional distribution, the, the probability of x, given uh, that y is equal to three. Uh, one, final, one final note is that uh, we have, uh, as before, we have a definition of independence. In this case here, uh, the same definition of independence we had before. So if you remember, the definition of independence was uh, A and B is equal to probability of A by probability of B. They're written in terms of these events that have been described uh, by um, random variables. This just comes down to the joint distribution is given by the multiple of the, um, of the marginal distributions. So this, in, in written in terms of um, random variables is the definition of independence that there's nothing different in the um, in the joint probability distribution than you might have expected um, from knowing the marginal distributions and believing that the two random variables have nothing to do with each other so that's independence we saw um, the definition of uh, the conditional probability the joint probability and the marginal probability thank you